welcome to another edition of Dominate the Nation. I'm Maxine Dugan in San Francisco. I am Domina L. in Denver, Colorado. And we're going to be having a little chat about uh, FBI investigations and you know, what we as the Horn Nation know about those, L. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the FBI is in the news right now. Everybody is, you know, pissing themselves over the fake investigation they did over the rapist. And so, you know, they're all kind of upset uh, about the, you know, FBI investigation, but... You know, given the fact that the FBI has been going on Operation Cross Country traditionally in October, you know, uh, pretending to be customers uh, in prostitution sting operations with local law enforcement agencies to um, arrest people for prostitution, um, you know, they've been copping a bunch of free fields all across the nation and getting away with it. And so when they're called upon to do an investigation about, you know, sexual assault allegations on people who aren't in the sex industry, well, it's kind of hard for them to do that, given that they have had all this multiple duplicitous uh, mandate to, you know, they're confused about who they can have sex with and who they can't and, you know, how to investigate sexual assault. I mean, the FBI has a history here, right? Mm -hmm. The FBI was created, you know, to investigate, you know, people in the sex trade anyway. <laughs> so they've... Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. They don't know that the the FBI was once the BOI, and when the Mann Act was passed, was it 1907 or 1911? It was in the early 1900s, and um, suddenly, you know, they were funded, and they became, that's how they became an, a national reaching organization through the Mann Act, which was all based on a false trafficking hysteria, which was called white slavery at that time. The great book is uh, Policing Sexuality. Uh, talks all about it, and it's a great book. But yeah, it's their history. Their, the, the cornerstone of the FBI was based on a lie around uh, white slavery, uh, trafficking of you know, there was immigration was big going on at that time, too, and they were afraid that the immigrants were, you know, kidnapping and selling 12 to 14 year old girls into prostitution. And it all turned out to be a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> right. And, you know, the FBI, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people in the prostitute nation do not know not only that history, but the FBI you know, uh, in trapping a bunch of uh, madams, you know, by threatening to, you know, arrest them and then forcing them to become informants for the FBI and forcing them to inform on who their customers were, especially if their customers were high political um, <laughs> people, that they would, um, you know, use whatever you know, sex, the, you know, political politician or the public official, you know, was involved in to be able to use that to uh, extort, you know, their votes, you know, to extort them to use their power to, you know, do what the elites want them to do. And that's, you know, well documented. All the stuff written by, um, J. Edgar Hoover, you know, who was the first director of the FBI, you know, that he was famous for spying on people illegally. He was famous for manufacturing uh, fake affairs with people to be able to extort them. So even if you weren't having an affair, you would still be a target of extortion through the FBI that would, you know, manufacture all this basically fake news, right? It all came from the FBI. So here today in America, you know, we have, you know, the president who's accused of a bunch of sexual assaults along with all his, you know, accused sexual assault, you know, 
of, you know, flunkies that he is appointing to the highest court in the land. <laughs> you know, that, that they use this fake FBI investigation to exonerate, you know, these sexual assault allegations. So it's no surprise to me, and I'm sure it's not to you, Elle, and it shouldn't be a surprise to the prostitute nation, but really who we want to communicate to are, you know, women like, you know, like the Me Too ladies, you know, like these, you know, lily white and entitled, you know, middle and upper class women, you know, who want to be like, well, you know, they expect law enforcement to work for them. They expect these sexual harassment laws on their job to work for them. They expect that they're going to be believed if they come forward. You know, they expect to be, you know, treated as full-fledged, you know, victims of sexual assault, and they expect to have all of this justice. <laughs> and they're not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and not only are they not getting it, but now they've got like all these elite women in the Senate who are going to confirm this, you know, accused rapist to the highest court in the land. So that basically makes all the laws. Moot. Yeah, it's a mockery. It's yeah. Gross. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So it's just kind of ironic to me. And then, you know, here in the Stormy Daniels Columbus case, Columbus, Ohio, at the strip club, you know, some of her co workers have filed a lawsuit, you know, against these specifically. Um, vice unit uh, women, more women, police officers, for, you know, trying to retaliate against Stormy by arresting them and accusing them of being prostitutes publicly, accusing them of being sex trafficking victims. So there's this lawsuit now. So why don't you explain uh, some details about that case? So the case that was filed, the civil case, it was filed by the other two women in um, the uh, who worked for the Sirens Strip Club in Columbus, Ohio, where Stormy Daniels was performing. And the case is a civil case filed against the women police officers who worked in the vice unit who came into the club that night with the purpose of arresting Stormy Daniels. Um, because, you know, they're Trump supporters. And so basically they're retaliating against her for speaking out against Trump, you know, for exercising her free speech. So even though her charges, Stormy's charges were dropped the next day, the other two ladies who were arrested, which uh, are the plaintiffs in this case, which are uh, another stripper and a cocktail waitress, so their charges continued for a while before they were dropped. So they eventually they got dropped, which is good. But so they are filing a civil lawsuit against those women police officers, you know, like our women senators who just, you know, they're voting in, a, you know, an accused rapist to the Supreme Court. <laughs> you know, they're going after these officers for, um, you know, retali using them to retaliate against another woman's free speech because they were president supporters. So they're basically, um, you know, uh, you know, they, um, you know, they, in the press, like all the police do, is they justify, you know, their, um, their vice units, you know, sting operations by saying they're, they're arresting prostitutes. That they're, you know, they're trying to rescue sex trafficking victims. And these women are not prostitutes. They're strippers. In, and one was a cocktail waitress. And they're not sex trafficking victims. So they were being maligned and harassed. 
in their workplace because of, um, you know, what these vice officers, you know, they violated their civil rights, essentially. So this is the same police department that's now being called under federal investigation. They're going to have the FBI come in and investigate, you know, this vice unit because this is also the vice unit that murdered the street-based worker on her job. Yeah, Donna Dalton. Yeah. You know, she was defending herself against being harassed by this cop. He was probably trying to have sex with her. He's probably a, another bad apple trying to, you know, run some baloney on her. Didn't identify who he was. She had to pull out a knife to, you know, to try to defend herself from him. And try to get away from him, and he shot and he killed her. Yeah, eight times, eight times shot her. Yeah. So that's why this this police department is under, you know, Columbus, Ohio is under all this investigation. Is because they've got multiple civil lawsuits. You know, this, the the twenty unit vice unit is is on suspension. It should be disbanded. Yeah, absolutely. But the fact that they're going to have, you know. The, um, you know, the sex spies, the sexual extortion unit, the federal ex sex extortion unit called the FBI to come in and investigate. I mean, it's just after they just did this janky investigation of, you know, this Supreme Court nominee to enforce the laws. I mean, it's, it's really, it's appalling. Yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, it's appalling and, uh. You know, that's what you get for, you know, criminalizing the wrong people and criminalizing women for the wrong things, for things, you know, we didn't do, things that are, you know, not crimes, because then you can't bring, you know, the people who are responsible for the real crimes, you know, these civil rights violators, you can't bring them, you can't bring them to justice. In fact, you're nominating them to Supreme Court. <laughs> Wow. And so then the police chief of Columbus, Ohio, has suspended the 20 unit, you know, vice unit and called in the FBI to come investigate the corruption. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's crazy. It's like, wow. Like, I was also thinking today about how um, the uh, agencies were under federal monitor in California. When the uh, Celeste Guap case, you know, there were over six agencies involved, uh, police officers from six agencies having sex with a minor, and then she was barely of legal age. Um, I think it was nearly 30 of them that were charged originally, and they were under federal monitor for a previous, you know, massive corruption and rape of a, of a prostitute uh, case. So yeah. how, what that's good... Open. Yeah, that's Oakland. Oakland Police Department is still under federal, a uh, federal monitor. Yes. You know, it what is. good is it? What What does it matter? I mean, <laughs> right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, the federal government is, you know, is a mockery. It's It's not even real. It's not legitimate. You know, so to, you know, have a police, the federal police force, the FBI, be investigating a local police force for corruption in Columbus, Ohio, when we already know the outcome of those, you know, types of investigations here in Oakland, California, you know, that type of police corruption, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. Nothing's going to happen. You know, maybe a couple people will be fired and those police, you know, agencies will be able to say, oh, it's the bad apples. Right. You know, it's just a couple <laughs> of bad apples. Well, really, it's the whole institution of the police force. It's the whole uh, institution of laws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's all flawed, and now it's all exposed for what it is, which is a meaningless crock of baloney. That's and a so, nice you know, way, nobody should feel obligated to follow any laws at this point, right? <laughs> 
Yeah, just the little people are supposed to, I guess. Just the little people like you and me, Al. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty mind blowing. But I mean, I'm not. It's I've known, you know. Welcome to our world. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to our world, me too, bitches. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's not even funny, but it's it's just wow. Yeah. Well, that's about all I've got to say today, Al. <laughs> that was quite a bit. <laughs> right on. Yep. Right on. <laughs> well, we'll check back again. There's more guests that want to be on the show, and there's more things to talk about. I really want to talk about the diversion program thing, so hopefully we can get to that pretty soon. Yeah. Right on. Cool. Well, thanks for <laughs> listening out there in YouTube land, and you know, please like us and share us, and uh, you know, share the good words of the good whores here <laughs> for telling you like telling it like it is, yep. telling like it's the for real. <laughs> right on. Have a good night. You too. <laughs>